comedy has taken a hell of a beating over the last few years since wokeness first started to rear its ugly head in the entertainment space about a decade or more ago. Comedy movies are no longer existent with the exception of maybe Lady Ballers this last year. Comedy shows are basically completely devoid of any actual humor unless they were grandfathered in like South Park and almost every single late night talk show host stopped telling jokes in 2016 to instead become a political vector for the Democrat Party. Still, in no particular comedy space has this effect been more felt and more obvious than in stand-up comedy where almost every successful former raunchy comedian has either changed their act completely or just quit. But two have not stopped or changed, except in the only way that they have changed, which is to turn their acts into savage mockery of the whole concept of wokeness and social justice, roasting the various tenets of the absurd cultish religion. Because it is a religion. I'm talking, of course, about Dave Chappelle and Ricky Gervais, two comedians who have made so much money thanks to their involvement with Hollywood previously in one form or another that they can basically just tell any joke they want and tell the woke police to go inhale a cactus up their asses if they don't like it. Even more funny is the fact that these two continue to generate massive views and tons of money. But that doesn't stop the impotent rage of the social progressive activist trash on social media and it's hilarious to see them trying to tear down two titans of comedy with it because it's exactly what i said impotent hello welcome back to will of the fans my name is will see what i did there i hope you're having a lovely lovely day if you find at some point that you are enjoying this content then please hit that like button and don't forget you can subscribe to the channel as well if you'd like to join me as we raise awareness of the fight against insanity in our entertainment thank you very much we're going first over to bright bar here for a catch-up on the new special by dave chappelle the dreamer as they read Dave Chappelle keeps skewering LGBTQQIAAP2S plus sacred cows in Netflix special The Dreamer. Okay, well, I'm going to be completely honest. I haven't had time to watch this in its entirety yet, but I have seen some of the uh, more well-known moments, and it does look just as good as uh, every other uh, special that he has done over the last couple of years. I think the last one was very good, the closer. The one before that was even better. And that was the one, of course, where Chappelle pointed out that he had a friend who was uh, trained because trying to protect myself from YouTube. And this unfortunate person ended up ending themselves because of the toxicity of the community. And uh, I think you'll find that he has no tolerance for it whatsoever. And so he is going to do everything he can to denigrate and tear it down. Good. You should. Because, quite frankly, they don't even exist. Comedian Dave Chappelle has defied the transgender cancel mob once again in his latest Netflix special, The Dreamer, which began streaming on New Year's Eve. While he devoted most of the hour-long special to other topics, including an extended bit re rehashing the Chris Rock Will Smith slap, Chappelle still managed to squeeze in several train jokes, providing riotous punchlines at unexpected moments. Near the beginning, Dave Chappelle recounted a story about meeting his idol Jim Carrey on the set of a 1999 movie Man on the Moon. That was a pretty... Pretty damn good film. And of course, we all know uh, the story that Jim Carrey, uh, who's always been a bit of a renegade when it came to his acting style, he decided to go full method. Which, if you don't know what that means, is uh, there are two types of actors. There are the actors who basically are themselves, and every role is basically just them. And then there are the actors who pour themselves into a role, suppressing themselves and replacing themselves with the character that they are portraying. In many ways, this kind of acting often gets more praise um, because it requires far more work. Jim Carrey is an insane example of this, where he was conducting himself as Andy Kaufman all the time, to the extent that Kaufman's wife went on record saying that she was astounded and and moved and freaked out sometimes by the fact that it was almost like her late husband was alive again. So there's that. Anyway, uh, Chappell explained how he was disappointed because Carrie remained in character as Andy Kaufman, even between takes. As a result, Chappell had to pretend Carrie was Kaufman throughout the entire meeting. All that to say, quote unquote, that's how trans people make me feel, he says. <laughs> yes, he does. He goes on for like a good few minutes about about this uh, trip to 
see Jim Carrey and, and how annoyed and, and pissed off he was that he wasn't meeting Jim Carrey because Jim Carrey insisted on being Andy Kaufman. <laughs> Despite the fact that he is not Andy Kaufman. Anyway, there you go. As he said before, Chappelle told the audience he no longer wants to provoke transgender people due to all of the negativity it spawns from corporate media. The comedian proceeded to tell several handicap jokes instead because they're not as organized as the gays. <laughs> These jokes included an extended bit about former Republican Madison Cawthorn, but soon Chappelle was back with more trans jokes. I wrote a play, he said, I did, because I know that the gays love plays. It's a very sad play, but it's moving. It's about a black transgender woman whose pronoun is sadly... You can't say it if you're white. It's a tearjerker. At the end of the play, she dies of of loneliness because white liberals don't know how to speak to her. <laughs> I haven't seen that bit. I've got to watch this. You've got to watch it too. Later, Chappelle said that if he were ever sentenced to jail, he would want it to be in California so he could identify as a woman and be sent to a woman's prison. They have been very conservative on what they've covered here because he then goes off on a tirade about all the things he would... He, he basically says, you know how it would go. And then he does an impression of himself screaming at women to, you know, give him their food and wash his clothes and suck his girl parts, which are not girl parts at all. Again, watch the show. Later, Chappelle said that if... He, uh, sorry, that's I've read that part. Netflix uh, has come under fire from radical transgender activists who have demanded that the streamer remove Chappelle's specials from its platform. But the company which signed Chappelle to a deal estimated to be more than $60 million has so far refused. Netflix even fired a trained sympathetic employee for leaking confidential viewer data on Chappelle to a news organization. Netflix is a confusing company. I think you know this as well as I do. One minute they make something like Anne Boleyn, or they make, you know, a crazy documentary series that fudge details and seem to support the woke agenda. And then, on the other hand, they absolutely refuse to get rid of Dave Chappelle or our other subject, Ricky Gervais. Now, of course, we're at Hollywood in total here, by the way. Credit where it's due. Ricky Gervais' Armageddon, that's his new special, drops atom bomb on Woke Nation. Brit bludgeons, word police, cultural appropriation, and so much more. Now, you may remember that Ricky Gervais, of course, was the man who uh, hosted the Golden Globes in 2020 and told the celebrities in attendance that they had no business lecturing the public about anything. Do not use your um, award speech to make a political statement. You have no business lecturing the public about anything. You spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So if you win an award, come up, thank your God, or your agent and your God, and fuck off. That's literally as close as, a, as an impression as I can do to what he said. It was glorious, it was a massive viral sensation, and ever since then, Ricky Gervais has steered into it massively by constantly attacking wokeness, and quite right too, because it's a mad, mad thing, and it is a religion, something Ricky Gervais has no time for whatsoever. Any of them. Ricky Gervais mulls the end of humanity in his Netflix special Armageddon. Pandemics, nuclear war, climate change, it could all happen someday, he argues. The British comics material hopes to extinguish a more current threat to Western civilization. Woke. Gervais's Armageddon skewers what Elon Musk dubbed the woke mind virus over and over again. Each attack is funnier and more precise than the last, ending with a semi-serious take on the subject that perfectly captures his thoughts on the matter. It's brilliant, all of it. And when the usual woke suspects dub the special boring, you know Gervais hit the bullseye. I've seen a bit of this one. Again, I haven't watched the whole thing, but it did look very, very funny. I had a good chuckle um, while I was walking through the supermarket yesterday and I had this a bit of this playing in my ear and uh, it was very, very funny. Even better, Armageddon serves as a saucy TED talk on comedy and culture, with Gervais gently scolding us for being offended by jokes that don't fall into neatly contained boxes. I have some terrible effing thoughts, he admits from the outset, acknowledging how the human mind works. Every human mind. You can't choose your thoughts, they just appear. It's too late. Yeah, that's true. The officer creator, the office creator rather, obviously, launches into the woke mindset next from open border policies to the word police. 
Every woke warrior is a comedic target, from people putting anti-fascist in their ex-bios they protest too much, to how certain words go from offensive to acceptable over time. Just be patient, he cautions. His inward routine, not to be spoiled here, is an instant classic that sheds a, a core woke principle. Yes, this would be the one where he points out uh, cultural appropriation is the hot term at the moment. And you're not allowed to have dreadlocks if you're a white person. You're not allowed to do anything that was technically first done by a black person. And then he points out that black people all use the N-word and that that was invented by white people. So, yeah, pretty funny. He does a much better job of it than me. Don't let that stop you going and watching. The best comedians use humor to illustrate points. Even the brightest minds can't articulate as well. Gervais does so repeatedly, much like his comic peer Dave Chappelle. Uh, Gervais also takes some shots at organized religion, a favorite target over the years, along with the folly of human nature and biology 101. There's uh, a lot of stuff in here, and I'm not going to go into all of it, but you should definitely be checking out both Dave Chappelle and Ricky Gervais' specials because they are fighting the good fight. They are attacking the very things that are attacking us. They are fighting back against wokeness in our entertainment and our politics because, honestly, is there anybody that isn't completely sick of it at this point? I really don't think so. And if you don't know what wokeness means, I've provided definitions galore, but it's effectively cultural Marxism, meaning an obsession with oppression, specifically everyone being oppressed by white people. That's basically what it means. That's as loose a definition as I can be bothered to give here. Go check out my other videos if you want to see a definition. I will eventually make a video about that, an actual feature. Uh, but I need a little bit more time before I can get around to that. In the meantime, let me know how you feel about this in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed it. And of course, subscribe to Will of the Fans if you'd like to see some more of me. Because I'd like to see more of you. You can probably tell my voice is crapping out. I've been sick lately, so I'm going to take a rest. But I'll be back with another video for you very, very soon. But until then, see you next time.